Hi, Jeff Love here from Alternative Heating and Supplies. Today we're going to be talking about how to install a water to air heat exchanger. Some people call them a hydrocoil, some people call them a simple radiator. But what I'm going to talk to you about is how to install them in a hot air furnace today. So today, I'm going to be talking about how to do this, and unfortunately my props are pretty crude and rude. I'm going to be using cardboard boxes and whiteboards to try to give you an idea. There's so many variables of hot air furnaces that it's difficult to try to get this all on camera. So what I'm going to do is try to go bounce back and forth. Please be patient. I'm going to try to cover all of them. Okay, one of the important things to recognize is where do I want to install my water to air heat exchanger? Now, when you have a hot air furnace, there's several different variables that matter. A lot of people have oil or propane or natural gas or even wood hot air furnaces. Um, you are going to take all these things into consideration of where to install the heat exchanger to, to distribute the heat throughout the house the best. The first thing that you might want to consider is where is an A coil that is mounted in the plenum. So on the drawing behind me, excuse the drawing, it's the best I could have done, you, most or all hot air furnaces have a return and then a supply, which comes out the plenum. Now the plenum here is identified by this because I'm going to use a cardboard box here in a minute. But what happens is the air gets returned from the house, it gets pushed through a fan and it gets shot back through, reheated and sent back through the house. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use this dotted area and I'm going to use a cardboard box because that's going to make it the easiest for us to work with to give you an idea of what we're doing. Now this plenum simulated is going to give us some areas that we need to concern ourselves with. Now the first question you ask yourself is do you have AC in the house and if so what you'll have is what they call an A coil which is usually mounted in the plenum. It is also a radiator or a heat exchanger of some kind where the Freon goes through and what that does is it gets really cold and it blows air through it and it distributes the AC in your house. So if you do have an A coil I recommend the best way to do it is as high as you can in the plenum. Um, I like a foot or two, or anywhere from a foot to two above the A coil. Um, I have heard them uh, getting too close and they do freeze, believe it or not. So we don't want to deal with that. You will burst them and you will ruin them. Uh, so if you get a foot away, you're in good shape. Now the other thing is, is if you don't have an A coil, you can put your heat exchanger anywhere in the plenum you would like. I personally like it right on top of the hot air furnace as you're seeing here the fan the plenum being this dotted line literally mount it right on the 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 supply side of there's a hole underneath the plenum all the plenum is is tin that's a, it's a ductwork it's just tin in a square to direct the air where you want it to go so if you actually cut into a plenum and look into the plenum on your furnace you're going to see the hole where the air comes out and it's usually considerably smaller than the plenum itself and the reason they do that is that they're trying to maximize the size of the plenum to get the most CFM which is air movement through the house. So if you have a tighter plenum or a smaller plenum, you're going to get less air travel. So they try to put the bigger plenum in to get better air travel through the house and less resistance to distribute the air evenly throughout the house. Another consideration that you might want to think about is depending on the furnace, if it's oil or gas, natural gas, propane, any of the other forms, what they will have here inside this point of the hot air furnace, not in the plenum, is they will actually have an overheating system. So as this jet or this thing is generating heat inside the hot air furnace, the thermostat will keep the fan running until the air is cooled off to cool off the heating element inside the hot air furnace. So what will happen is the oil fire jets, the hypothetical oil in this case, the jets will shoot off, build a flame, heat up a chamber, which is the air is going to circulate around to distribute hot air. But once the house has been uh, satisfied with the heat temperature that the thermostat is asking for, the jet will turn off and the air will continue to flow to cool that heating element inside the hot air furnace. A consideration to take is as that air is cooling that heating element is to get the heat exchanger far enough away from that sensor that is basically telling the hot air furnace fan to continue to run until everything's cooled off. If that heat exchanger is a little bit too close, that sensor will not be triggered to say it's cooled off, you can turn off the fan. That'll allow the fan to cont run continuously and you'll get overheated. So 
try to put your heat exchanger above um, any kind of sensors or anything else. They're usually mounted on the side and they're identified like a Honeywell or some kind of a, a silver box on the side. Try to get it away from that a little bit so it doesn't trip that sensor. Another thing that people always ask me about is, hey, instead of mounting on the supply, can I mount it on the return? Yes, you can, technically. I do not like it because usually the returns are much smaller. They're usually long and thin. Uh, they're difficult to work with, uh, but you can put them in there. The only reason I do not like them is, again, that sensor, which is on the hot air furnace, if the air is coming back, it's getting reheated back up before it goes into the uh, hot air furnace, before it's sent back out to the house, that thermostat, that overheating thermostat, is going to say that it's never going to cool off to a point, so the fan will never turn off. That is the reason I don't like doing that. Another reason is, is that the heat exchanger will actually reheat the air, and these fans will start overheating at about 140, 150 miles an hour on the bearings. And is if the air is coming in there hot, you might overheat this fan where it'll be turning on and off your fan continuously and be a big nuisance. Um, and then one more thing that a lot of people ask me about is, does this generate resistance on the fan? And does that slow down the airflow through my house? The quite answer to that question is simply yes, it sure does. So you want to find a heat exchanger that is going to maximize the size of your plenum so you get least amount of resistance. Now if you, 99% of the, or not 99, but 95% of the time, you do not have a resistance problem once you install them. But if you do, most of the fans are two and three speed. And the guy or the gal who set that up in your house originally probably doesn't have it on its highest setting. So simply looking inside your uh, hot air furnace and pulling off the lid, you'll actually find this dip switches or changing wires will increase the speed of the fan. I would recommend you talk to an electrician or heating and cooling guy to help you with that. But usually, nine out of 10 times, you can increase the speed to compensate for the resistance that you're gonna generate on the heat exchanger. But most of the time, it's never even a concern. So that's not even something really to worry yourself about. What I recommend is install it, see if you're not getting enough air through the house, then worry about that aspect of it.